Ladies and gentlemen, Crypto Crew University has hundreds of thousands of subscribers and is one of the biggest channels in the cryptocurrency space. He is proposing, contrasting the popular belief, that Bitcoin will top out in this bull market at $80,000 US dollars and then enter a 10 year long bear market. Now this is a very contrarian viewpoint. Most people are very bullish right now and he's actually leaning more bearish as we approach these levels of 80,000 because he's thinking that's where the bull market might just end. So I'm gonna take a look at that claim and I'm gonna discuss my agreements but also disagreements with certain elements coming to a conclusion, a debunk of that argument. So ladies and gentlemen, Let's get into it. Before we get into Crypto Crew University's top prediction and why I disagree with it, we need to look at a few things. First and foremost, we have a sale currently on the VIP group on Telegram. That is the best deal you'll ever get for VIP. What is the VIP group? Well, it's altcoin trading signals on Telegram, as well as a group chat with all of the VIP members to track trades, discuss the markets, whatever it may be. Very good value, 78.52% win rate on the signals. Check it out. We then have the BitGet and Bing X exchanges. If you need an exchange to buy and sell cryptocurrency on which everyone does that is low in fees and very secure bitget and bingx will sort you out quite nicely my referral links are down below for even further trading fee discounts and rewards and then finally the bull market sale on the crypto on the crypto academy's become a trader course is active right now that's the educational course teaching you how to trade much better value than most courses in this market i can tell you that much uh, so check all those things out let's get into the content so this is not my first video on Crypto Crew University's uh, top prediction. Uh, 79K, this video was made two months ago. He's predicting a 79K, let's just say 80K for the sake of the video, right? It's much cleaner. An 80K top and then a 10-year bear market. That's his prediction. Now, credit where credit is due to Crypto Crew University. I think his prediction, his formula is technically valid. Uh, the formula itself is technically valid, but I disagree strongly with the prediction overall. And I do actually know as well, according to YouTube commenters on my channel, that he has said that he, you know, he's not 100% sold in the prediction and he's going to take it as it comes and he's going to assess the charts when it gets to 80K. He's not just going to blindly sell at that price region. So just a few notes before we get into it there, just clarifying his point of view. Now, I don't actually watch Crypto Crew University. I don't watch his channel. I've watched maybe five or six of his videos uh, and most of those have been related to this specific prediction. So um, if there's any other things you have in the comment section about videos, about what he says, I haven't watched them. All I know is that he has this prediction. I know very well what he stands for in regards to this prediction. So let's get into it. What is the prediction he's making first and foremost? So Crypto Crew University is making a claim based on an established trend. What is the established trend? Now, the established trend is this. If you take the measured move from the bottom of a bear market to the top of a bull market, so that gives you 56,000, that's how much Bitcoin went upwards in valuation, 56,000%, okay? If you take that number, 56,000, and you divide it by the number 5.3, you will get the total return from the bottom to the top of the next bull market. Okay, so then we get 11,000, obviously 56,000 divided by 5.3 equals around 11,000. So us just taking this measurement from bottom to top of this bull market predicted the amount of gain from bottom to top of the next bull market. So then all you need to establish is where the bottom is and you can predict the top. That's what happened over and over again. You take 11,000, you divide it by 5.3. What do you get? You get around, right, 2,000. Okay, so it's a very valid uh, trend. It, it very much works. It's happened a couple of times now. And if we take the number 2,000, okay, roughly 2,000, and we'll do it on the screen right now. We take 2,000 roughly and we divide it by 5.3. Okay, what do we get? We get 377. And then we go and we see, okay, the bottom was here at around 15.6K. All right, we take uh, 377. We add that onto the Bitcoin price right now. That takes us to around where we are right now, but it, realistically, if I added the numbers up correctly, it should take you to around 79K to 80K. All right, I, I just did a rough estimate, obviously, on a zoomed out chart. But the, the reality is if you divide the total return from 2019, from 2018 bottom to uh, the November 2021 top, you get a, a number, a percentage that if you measure it from the bottom of the spool market and extend it upwards, it brings you to around 79,000, let's just say 80K. All right, so... He's saying that we're going to go to 80K in this bull market, and that's going to be the top based on this trend. Now, obviously, that is, um, that's got its various problems. I'll look into the problems in a second. 
Uh, I've been discussing why I don't like this formula since around here at 2026 20, k or something. I made my first video on it. Uh, so I haven't liked this for a long period of time, but now we're up here at 73 k just on the doorstep of reaching the apparent top. Uh, and look, Bitcoin doesn't have much signs of slowing down here, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. But the main problem, I'll start with my first major problem, and that's a problem that I've been speaking about since 26 k 27 k whenever I made my first video on this. Uh, my first problem has always been if you suggest that this 5.3 trend will play out in this bull market and it will only take us to around 80k, right, which is only about 15% higher from the previous top at 69k, what happens next, right? Because you have this number, let's say we top out at 80k, you have a number from uh, here to 80k, that's around 400%. If you divide 400% by 5.3, okay, in order to predict what's going to happen in the next bull market, you only get 75% return. So let's say we go downwards from 80K. Uh, let's just say we go downwards, not even a traditional 80%. Let's just say we go downwards 60%, which is a massive deviation from what we usually do. Let's give it a grain of salt here, benefit of a doubt. If we go downwards to 31K in the bear market, and then look, we have 75% upwards to go, that will only take us to around, as you can see, 54K. So what's, what's the point I'm trying to make here with all these words that, that you might've just gone right over your head? The point I'm trying to make is this. This trend, which he is relying on to a certain extent, which predicts the top at 80k, is technically valid this cycle, but if you follow through and map this trend in the future past this cycle, it predicts that Bitcoin will never reach an all-time high again, and it will essentially flatline at the 40k region, okay? So my point is, it's an unsustainable trend. And if you have an unsustainable trend, an unsustainable trend is very likely to end before it reaches the point of unsustainability. Now, it is reaching the point of unsustainability in the next cycle. So this cycle is really the last time it can actually play out properly without sending Bitcoin into a spiral downwards or sideways forever. Now, Crypto University understands that this is an uns unsustainable trend. And what he's actually proposing, he's actually proposing that now Bitcoin will top out at 80K and then it will enter a 10-year bear market. Okay, so he knows that regular cycle theory would break if we topped out at 80K because his trend, obviously, divide every number, by, divide every bull market return by 5.3. If you did it in the next cycle, we would never go upwards to an all-time high again. He understands that would break the macro trend. He understands his theory is an unsustainable theory. And so he's saying that Bitcoin will enter a 10-year bear market, okay, after reaching 80K in this bull market. So the top's going to be at 80K and Bitcoin will reach a 10-year bear market. That's what he's predicting. Uh, at least that's what I perceive him to be predicting. Now, now obviously this is this is in my opinion quite absurd uh, because there's no indication whatsoever from a cyclical basis at all that Bitcoin will enter a 10-year bear market after reaching 80k. Especially considering, especially considering we are only nine percent away from 80k right now, and it's pre-halving. The halving hasn't even occurred yet, and the halving historically is when the bull market really starts to kick off. Now, obviously in this cycle we are deviating quite a lot from regular cyclical structures, so I mean it doesn't necessarily debunk his argument, me just saying things like that, but it certainly is a case, right? We haven't even hit the halving yet. Previously, you know, the halving was over here in, in May. You know, it only started the bull market after the halving. Same thing back here in 2017. We only started the bull market after the halving. Now, again, I know, I understand we've deviated this time. We've started running up early, but the bull market, guys, from when it first starts, usually lasts about a year, about a year in length, if not more, a year and a half. Now, let's just say we started the bull market down here in September, which is the last time we had a significant correction. A year and a half from September is still the start of next year. It's still the start of 2025. So even though we've deviated from historical cyclical trends, it would be very abnormal to top out at 80K, assuming we're going to reach 80K probably this month or maybe next month. You know, it'd be very abnormal to top out there, let alone topping out there and entering a 10-year bear market would be strange. But let's look, actually, let's actually, give his case the benefit of a doubt here. Why is he saying we're going to enter a 10-year bear market? Well, I just want to say first and foremost, I don't know where 10 years comes from. I don't know why he thinks it's going to be 10 years long. I, I don't know that. I haven't got a valid explanation for why he says that. 10 years just seems like an abstract number in my opinion. But what I can say is that he's looking at tra uh, traditional markets and he's suggesting that traditional markets are going to drag down Bitcoin. And he's suggesting this for what I assume to be uh, interest rates, right? So he's looking at interest rates. He's saying, okay, look, interest rates are going to start decreasing in June this year, most likely, according to this uh, chart here. Okay, the CME group uh, predicts where interest rates are going to start decreasing. According to them, they're going to start in decreasing, sorry, in June. So the first rate cut's going to be in June. June is three months away. If we look historically, 
right? We have the S&P 500 in dark blue and the interest rates in light blue. We then have vertical lines. Now, the white vertical lines represent uh, when interest rates topped out and the yellow vertical line represents when the market bottomed, right? So historically, what we see is that by the time interest rates top out, by the time, but it's very important, by the time interest rates top out, the market is already halfway through a bear market, okay? And then when interest rates, uh, when, when S&P 500 bottoms out, interest rates are, are decreasing massively, okay? So again, we'll, we'll look at, uh, you know, 1974 here. Interest rates topped out, okay, the, the white line, the market was already in a bear market, it was already down significantly, and then by the time the S&P 500 bottomed out, interest rates were significantly decreasing, okay? Same thing in 1982. The market, uh, when interest rates topped out, the market was already in a bear market. And by the time the market, uh, by the time the S&P 500 bottomed out, interest rates were heavily decreasing. Same story in 1990, same story during the dot-com bubble, same story in 2008. Now, he's obviously suggesting to an extent that interest rate decreases are coming and hence the market, the S&P 500 is going to drop downwards and hence that's going to drag down Bitcoin and that's going to trigger a bear market. And he's suggesting that's all going to line up at 80K, Okay. Here's the issue. There's a, there's a few issues. First and foremost, the first fundamental issue is this, okay? In all of the prior, the prior bear markets and in all the prior price action for the S&P 500, there's been one thing that's massively consistent. There's been one uh, characteristic that's been the same throughout the entire time. That characteristic is this. During bear markets, okay, the Federal Reserve never raises interest rates, in the bear market from 2022 to 2023, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates, okay? The Federal Reserve did something they never done before, and it affected the S&P in an abnormal way. And so using the prior historical data, which has a significantly different characteristic and applying it to the future is uh, not logically consistent, okay? It's it's not that's probably the wrong phrase. Logically consistent is probably the wrong phrase, but it's, it's not rational to do so. All right, we have a completely different market environment, and I'll tell you why. Because as I said, the Federal Reserve, it, it, when when we started going downwards in the S and P five hundred in early twenty twenty two, instead of cutting rates like they've done before, okay, all of these times we've gone down, they cut interest rates heavily all of the times, cutting, 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 cutting. Instead of cutting rates, they actually raised rates. That is a defining characteristic that has only happened in this last two years for the S&P 500. So we have a completely different circumstance with rates. How are we going to say, how are we going to sit here and say with a completely different circumstances in rates that rate decreases are going to drag the S&P 500 down like they've done previously when we just had a whole two years of completely different actions by the Federal Reserve in reaction to the S&P 500 going down, okay? The point is, right now, we have a different, major, majorly different characteristic to the previous, you know, 40 years of 50 years of data. So we can't really compare them. Now, even if we are going to compare them, even if we're going to ignore everything I just said, which is extremely important and shouldn't be ignored, even if we're just going to ignore everything I just said and just act like everything's the same and it's a, it's a usual market and everything's normal, even if we're going to do that, if interest rates are dropping in three months, okay, that means they, they topped here. The S&P 500 is still going upwards. It's breaking all-time highs. If you look at these white lines in prior uh, S&P 500 bear markets, you see that by the time interest rates top, the S&P 500 is already like six, month to a, six months into a bear market. All right, that, so this is the problem, right? If the interest rates were going to drag down the S&P 500, if the interest rates dropping in three months were going to drag down the S&P 500, the market would likely already be dropping. But instead of dropping, we're breaching all-time highs. We're reaching places we've never been to before. So there's two very strong arguments there uh, that the S&P 500 is not acting as it usually acts. And so to assume it will do so is irrational. And in that case, we don't really know what's going to happen with the S&P 500. And so we can't really be making predictions like Crypto Crew has done saying we're going to enter a 10-year bear market and Bitcoin's going to top out at 80K and everything's going to get dragged down for 10 years because of this trend, which is now invalid. It's incompatible with the current data. Okay, so let me reassess my two problems and then I'll end off the video because I don't want to drag it on for too long. First, the first problem, okay? First problem, the trend is unsustainable. The 5.3 trend is unsustainable. If it went past this cycle, it, Bitcoin would never reach an all-time high again. And so it's more likely to break this cycle. Second problem, we're like, you know, less than 10% away of reaching the supposed bear bull market top. And we haven't even had the halving yet. That's just untraditional by all metrics of analysis. Uh, third problem, 
the S&P 500 being dragged down by interest rates doesn't make sense to an extent, or at least we can't really know if it's going to happen. I wouldn't say it's not going to happen. I'm just saying we don't really know because we have a completely different characteristic. The interest rates were risen during the bear market, not dropped. Uh, and, thir- and, and fourth of all, if that was the case, if we were going to drop down in the S&P and that was going to drag down Bitcoin, it would be a massive coincidence if it was going to happen at the same time as Bitcoin reaching 80k. And furthermore, we would have already seen dropping occur most likely, seeing as the first interest rate cut is in three months, or it would be occurring very, very, very soon. So my whole stance on the Crypto Korea University's 5.3 trend predicting a bull market top at 80k and then a 10-year bear market is this. I think that the trend he's using is valid. I think we will be watching that 80k level quite intensely. It would not surprise me at all if we saw a correction from 80k. Uh, and look, if we do got you know if we do go downwards from 80k and we start dropping below things like our prior all-time highs, we'll start to consider it more more fully. But right now, I don't see a real objective reason to take it very very seriously other than as something to just look at for entertainment and just see whether it will work, right? Again, if we reject from 80k briefly, see a correction, um, that wouldn't surprise me at all because, again, this is an established trend and when you're breaking an established trend, you generally have some headwinds to do so. So we reject from 80k, that would be completely normal. Break above it after some rejections consolidation, that would make perfect sense to me. Um, But yeah, look, right now, right now, as of current, I don't see much of a reason to take it too seriously. Again, if we reject from 80k and we start dropping below things like our prior all-time high, dropping below things like, you know, 60k, that's when you can really start to be like, okay, well, maybe this is actually real. But right now, it's not something I'm overly concerned about. So guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, just check out the Crypto Academy's bull market sale right now if you want to learn how to trade. Bing X and BitGet, my referral links are down below for 15% trading fee discounts. And then finally, uh, the Telegram VIP group is having a sale if you want altcoin trading signals. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good day.